The court is now in session. What's up everyone? I hope you're all well. Today I've got something a little bit different. I bought a load of Belgian beers and today I'm going to review them as I've never tried them before and stick them in an order. You could say it's kind of a ranking video as well. It was planned to be a ranking video. I was going to do it with my mate Scully, but unfortunately he lives quite far away. We couldn't make it happen and the football was on and they've been sat in my fridge for a few weeks and they were calling my name. Sounds like a fucking excuse to me. Speaking of football, the day I'm filming this, we've got Scotland and England playing tonight in their final group games. So well done Scotland for sneaking through. All in all, we've got 14 beers that I've uh, already drank. Uh, realistically, it's probably a bit too much to drink on camera. You're a pussy. I'm definitely going to do another episode that's alcohol based. So get in the comments with what you think I should try next. And me and a friend will do a ranking video. Anyway, let's get into it. So first up, I tried Pecoris. So Pecoris is by Lindemans. And Lindemans have a pretty pretty substantial range that I'm looking forward to trying. This particular beer was only 2.5%, so it's pretty pretty easy drinking. It had a nice peach flavour, so perfect in the sun, in the beer garden, if you're watching football or any other sport. It's only going to be a quick, quick snapshot review for each of them. So I'm going to give you a snapshot review and then give it a rating. And this one, really, really tasty. The low percentage made it easy, an easy drink, uh, and I gave it 9 out of 10. Next up, we have Petrus Red. Now, when I was, um, not whilst I was drinking, but the next day, I uh, made a few notes. So I'm just going to glance down to the notes because I've uh, got some uh, a little bit of information on some of them. This beer is made by mixing dark ale and real cherries. It's 8.5%, so really, really strong. I found it a bit too much, to be honest. I almost, it, it tasted almost like a red wine. I'm not a huge wine drinker. In, well, in fact, I don't like wine at all. If you like red wine and you like beer, you would love this. But for me, I struggled to put it down. So unfortunately, I only gave this 2 out of 10. If that's the top tier over here, we're putting that right over there for now, I think. Next up, we have the Cherry Shoof. This is from the Brassy de Chouf Brewery in Wilbrun, which is in Belgium, obviously. Uh, cherry flavoured, as the name suggests. It's 8%, so super, super strong, just like the last one. But they managed to get the balance much better on this one. It had a sweeter flavour. It was quite easy to drink, which is surprising considering the, uh, the alcohol content. I massively, massively rate this. Despite its 8%, I could put a few of those away. I gave this one 9 out of 10 as well. Next up, we've got the Vedette Extra White. So this one's 4.7%, and I've got to be honest, I really, really didn't enjoy this one. It was almost like a soup. It's got coriander in there. Super tasty soup, super spicy carrot and coriander. It just doesn't, I, I don't want coriander flavours when I'm drinking a beer. It is made from all natural ingredients, so I kind of appreciate what they were trying to do but not for me whatsoever. I didn't enjoy this even more than I didn't enjoy this. So that was two out of 10. I had no choice but to give this one out of 10. Sorry, uh, sorry to the guys who make this, but not for my taste whatsoever. Okay, next up we've got Mongozu, and that is coconut flavor. Okay, apologies for the odd cut, but I actually got to the end of the video I fully ranked them and then I watched the footage back and a couple of the uh, beers the screen had went fuzzy, so take two. Uh, for the Mongozo, the Mongozo is a coconut flavoured beer. I am not even a fan of coconut, but this was a sneak surprise. I actually really enjoyed this one. It's super, super refreshing. Mongozo do a, a couple other flavours. I've written here that they do a mango one and a banana one. Banana, I would love to try banana. I'm definitely going to get that in and give it a go. At only 3.6%, it's really easy to drink as well. Nice summer's day. You could pack several of these away. I gave this one 7 out of 10. Right, on to the next one. We have St. Bernardus Prior 8. It's another strong one. There's another one that was 8%. So you can kind of see why I didn't, uh, didn't necessarily want to drink all these on the same day anyway. You can tell it's going to have a rich flavour uh, before you even taste it. It's got really dark purple colour and it's really thick looking. Damn, boy, he's thick, boy! I unfortunately found it to be quite sour. 
and not that enjoyable to drink. Another one that might be um, might be tasty to a, a more sophisticated palate, but it wasn't it wasn't for me. It wasn't the worst, but it, it was hard. It was hard to put down. Like I, I wouldn't have more than one of these. I give this four out of ten. Okay, on to the next one. We've got another Lindman, and this is a Lindman's Cassie. What Cassis? Not sure how you kind of pronounce that, but. Yeah, this one is yeah, this one is another one with a, a dark purple color. I almost, it almost looked like a, a glass of wine when I poured it. I would pair this with a nice microwavable macaroni and cheese. But with this one, that's that's down to the the black currant flavor. At only three and a half percent. It was a much easier, more casual drink. You could have um, a few of these. Super refreshing, nice crisp flavor. I did really enjoy this one, but the pairing of black currant with beer. Is not quite as good a match as uh, as the cherry, but I also gave this one seven out of ten. So next we've got Rodenbach Grand Cru. At six percent, this is another fairly strong one. This is a Flemish beer, which uh, I've just made some notes. A Flemish beer is a style of beer brewed in Flanders in Belgium, and this won the world's best dark ale. Flemish beers are actually known for their sour taste. I wasn't an, a huge fan of this one either. The description on the site for this one actually says you, you're either going to love it or hate it. Um, yeah, it's another one that kind of tastes like wine as well. Really not for me. So I gave this one 4 out of 10. Okay, next up we've got the Bar Bar. And straight away, this is my favourite bottle out of them all. Just aesthetically, I like what the bottle looks like. It's the one that I would say tastes most like a traditional beer. What makes this one a little bit different is they add honey during the fermentation process. Oh, honey, honey. And that really helps bring a, a little bit of sweetness to the, the flavor, which I liked. I could definitely drink a couple of these, but they were, they were immediately heavy on the stomach. They're, um, I can't imagine you could have too many. So yeah, quite, quite enjoyable, but not, not that easy to put down. So I gave this one. 6 out of 10. I'm just going to create a bit of space so I don't knock any of these over whilst I'm showing them to the camera. So two seconds. A few moments later. Okay, next up we have uh, Fruly. Now Fruly, as you can see from the uh, front of the bottle, is strawberry flavoured. Really sweet. It was almost like a cider. Um, if you've ever had a Copperberg, a strawberry copperberg, kind of similar. I see this a little less sweet. It's got natural strawberry flavor in there, and that's a good thing. At 4.1%, it's pretty easy to put down. I could definitely have several of these uh, on a weekend for sure. I gave this one eight out of 10, really tasty. Next up, we've got Delirium Red. Cool little elephant uh, logo on the front there. This one kind of reminded me of the Petrus Aged Red. It's eight and a half percent, so it's another really strong one. But they seem to have take, taken the, the Petrus recipe and just improved up upon it because the Petrus is strong, tastes like a wine. This is a lot sweeter. They've managed to get the balance much more right. It's cherry flavored and it is pretty sour and it wasn't one of my favorites. It wasn't the easiest to put down, but I did give it six out of 10. Okay, next up we've got, we've got Leaf Mints. Leaf Mints Frutis, this is called. This one is it's sparkling, so it's quite gassy. Why am I so gassy? But the flavor is great. If anything, there's maybe a little bit too much going on. Uh, I've got a list here. It's got, it contains blueberries, cherries, raspberries, and strawberries, as well as almond flavor. Uh, all that packed in there. There's maybe a bit too much going on. And with that mix of berries, it's got a kind of sour taste, but nothing like, um, nothing like this here. It's not unpleasant. It's only 4.2%, so it's not too difficult to put down. Yeah, pretty tasty. I give it 7 out of 10. Only two more to go. Uh, next up, we've got Timmermans, another um, cherry-flavoured one. And this is a Lambic beer. Timmermans has another pretty decent range, lots of different flavours, so I'm looking forward to trying those. This is the only one I've had so far. They have peach, they have strawberry, they have raspberry versions. So yeah, I'll definitely get those in and try them. It's a pretty standard 4%, um, so not too strong, but it's really dry. Makes it a much more different drink to say that the Leafman's here. I'd say it's nowhere near as good as the Shoof, but maybe on par with the Leafman's. So for that reason, I gave it 7 out of 10. The last one is a Flores Mango. 
it's another uh, another brand with a tasting looking range that I'm uh, I'm gonna get more of their flavors in. They have more unusual ones like chocolate and ninkberry. berry. I've no idea what that is, but I want to try it. This this mango one's not particularly complex flavor. It's smooth, it's fruity and tasty, but it's really easy to drink. You could pack several of these with for sure. Nice summer's day, just keep them coming. Eight out of 10 I gave this one. So that's a really quick snapshot review of each of them. I haven't went into too much detail. I'm not a drinks connoisseur, um, giving each one of them a rating, but where would I rank them? I kind of kind of put them roughly in order as I was going along, but let me take a look at the list here. So without a doubt, without a doubt, last, tastes like soup. I think that that's fair. That tasted like the red wine, really not a fan. I think these two deserve their place there. Um, I would say this was tastier than this though. Um, then we've got the Timmermans and the Lehmans. Now with the Timmermans and the Leafmans, uh, this was more dry. I definitely preferred this one. So I think that's a, a fair rank as well there. Now we've got Mango and Fruly. Those two are probably on par with each other. But definitely better than the black current Lindemans. So we're going to swap those over there. Uh, coconut. Coconut was another 7 out of 10. So again, these two were tastier. But was this tastier than the black current? Not even a fan of coconut, but I did really enjoy it. Um, I'd say that was more refreshing. That was probably a tastier drink, you know, which, uh, like I said, was pr pr it surprised me. So we move that one there. These two are joint here, eight out of ten. Outstanding, outstanding. To be honest with you, those two, they're both nine out of ten, but very different drinks. At only two and a half percent, you could kind of argue, is this even alcohol? It is. Um, much easier put, to put down, but this is a more complex um, man's drink. So there it is, that's the final ranking for these ones. I'll uh, put their scores underneath each, uh, each bottle. And like I said, comment below what you think I should drink in the next video. I'll get a special guest on and we'll drink together and we'll do a ranking video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.